Dr. Umar. I'm doing very well. All Thank right. You. Tell me what happened with your daughter. Um, she got suspended for five days um, because she had a physical altercation with a white girl at school. Okay. And what was that altercation, altercation over? Um, I was, my daughter told me that um, her and her friends were receiving texts from, I guess, a mutual, I, I guess the white girl is a mutual friend of one of theirs or something. Mm -hmm. And they all got a group text uh, with a screenshot showing that the white girl said that she doesn't like black people, they should all be lynched. And my daughter is kind of militant like her mother. Mm -hmm. So um, she went to go and um, look for the girl specifically to fight her. Mm -hmm. And my daughter also told me that the security, the white security guard, followed her to the fight to try to stop her. But he couldn't, he, he couldn't, he couldn't stop her. Who, who called you a dumb A? The security? Okay, she's just telling me this right now. I'm just like, I'm getting pieces of it okay. as the days go by. But um, she said that um, the security guard followed her to the fight. So apparently he knew why she was going to fight the girl. However, when I got the call, um, I wasn't told what happened. I wasn't told that there was any, any racial threats involved. I was actually told by my daughter that they, they told her to just pick her up outside of the school. I didn't need to come in, and the security guard would meet me outside, and I asked him, I said, well, did the other girl get suspended? This is before I knew anything racial happened. And he said, yeah, yeah, I, I think so, and basically brushed me off. So I waited till I got home and asked my daughter, you know, everything that happened, and then that's when I found out that all this was behind it. So my question to you is, um, is this something that I should um, – report to the school even though they already know or since they already know should i go over their heads and make a formal complaint to the district i don't even know how to go about this okay there's a couple things first off this is a public school yes it is a public oh, high school okay it's in what type of a community predominantly black mexican oh, with no, it's a, um, I live in the high desert of California, so there's a lot of white, it's a white school, predominantly. Predominantly um, white. Yes. And your daughter is in what grade? She's in the ninth grade. This is oh. her first year there. First year there, predominantly white school, predominantly white teachers as well, correct? Yes, as, as far as I, I can see, <laughs> yes. Okay, a uh, couple things. Uh, number one, you need to get the district code of conduct. I'm writing that down. District. Get the school district code, code of conduct and mm -hmm. find out what specifically it states as a first punishment for fighting. Mm -hmm. And then you also want to see what it specifically states uh, as a punishment for making threats. Okay. Because okay. if I remember correctly, you said the white girl text. Who did she text? How do we know she texted us? Um, that, that's what I was asking my daughter. I was asking my daughter if there's any way you can get in contact with your friend so that I can get the actual um, screenshot of the text. Was it sent to someone, do we know? Yes, it was definitely sent to a, a few of the young ladies. Okay, but it wasn't sent to your daughter? No. Okay. Okay, but your daughter knows the names of those who received it. Yes, she does. Okay. Uh, okay, so you need to code of conduct and you need to see what it says for someone making threats as well as racial slurs because you said she, she wished that all black people, all the black children would be lynched. What did she say? She said, I don't like black people. And then she said, this is what my daughter told me ver ver verbatim, the text, the screenshot said, I don't like black people. You should all be lynched. I don't and like black people. That's the racial slur. You should all be lynched. That's the physical threat, the threat of physical violence. That's what I thought. Now, so, is that, could that possibly be the reason why they didn't even deal with me and they tried to kind of like push me on? Absolutely, because put it this way. If your daughter said something like that about the LGBTQ or about mm -hmm. the white students, she would be referred for expulsion. 
Technically, that white girl should be getting referred for an expulsion. Not only the, now the racial slur would get her a suspension, but the fact that she said you all need to be lynched, that right there, the wishing That's of death on an entire race of people, that is, that is zero tolerance because it is a threat of violence. She could technically be referred for an expulsion by the district. So what you need to do is get the, when did this happen? This happened um, week before last. Week before last. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to formulate a letter ASAP because we're coming up on Thanksgiving break and then you got Christmas three weeks later. You need to handle, mm -hmm. they need a letter from you this month, the same month I'm as the incident. Say that again. I'm, I'm taking it. I'm going to um, type up the letter tonight and I'm going to take it to them tomorrow. Uh, okay. Here's my question though. Okay. This is what you need to do. When you type up your letter, you should be able to find the student code of conduct on the district's website. You need uh -huh. to quote from it. In other words, you need to say, according to the district code of conduct, the use of a racial slur, first offense, earns you five days of suspension. I want to know if that woman received that, if the, if, if the other child received that, the child who provoked the incident. Then I would also say, according to the student code of conduct, anyone who threatens physical bodily harm or death because this wasn't just physical bodily harm she said lynch that's death so anyone who threatens or wishes death upon a child what is the punishment for that and it'll probably say something like temporary expulsion or permanent expulsion and you need to then ask in that letter was this child exposed because according to the code of conduct excuse me was this child referred for expulsion because according to the code of conduct that's what should have happened so you want to use the code of conduct in your letter to ask, is this what happened to the other child? Because if it didn't, this is an incident of white privilege where the child is being protected from being punished for what she did because she's white and the victim was black. Gotcha. And let me also say to you that the, depending on how they respond, and you'll be able to keep me posted in this process, but depending on how uh, they respond, you might need to write a um, your next step because this That's is a letter. This 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 right here could go to the principal, but you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking your letter goes to the superintendent. I'm okay. thinking your letter find out the superintendent their address because you're going to you can call the office and get the email, but I also recommend that you send a certified signature confirmation letter from the post office because it's the only way you can prove they actually got it. So I would email one and I would set a certified one. I would address my letter to the superintendent and I would carbon copy the uh, principal. Okay. And if Got you it. wanted to, because this is pretty serious. So if you wanted to, you could also carbon copy the mayor of your city. Oh, and okay. even some of your elected officials. And I'm going to tell you why. That girl wished a hate crime upon black people and all of the black students in that school. She wished a hate crime upon your child and other, and that's why I believe that you should carbon copy the mayor, your state rep, your state senator, your U.S. rep, and your U.S. senator. That, that, that text message was a hate crime. And the question is, what do we do in this district when a hate crime a, a, the threat of a hate crime has been made by one student against an entire race of other students. That's that's the question that needs to be asked in your letter. Your letter needs to be strong, professional, non-emotional, but strong. Yeah. Okay. One student against. Okay, got it. I'm writing all of this down. Now, do you mind if I um, email you? No, you can send it to me. You can send it to me. So I can look at it before you send it in. Uh, my email address is uh, D-R-U-M-A-R-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. D-R-U-M-A-R-J-O-H-N-S-O-N at yahoo.com. No period after the doctor and I'll look at it. But please quote from that uh, student code of conduct. Um, and I... I I think you should carbon copy at least two elected representatives. Now, the mayor doesn't have any legal authority over the schools because education is a, a state right. 
and a local function. So the mayor, the state runs the schools, not the mayor. But the mayor has influence over what they do there. You know, but your state rep and your and your and your state senator, they are the most responsible because they actually legislate what happens in the schools. So your state uh, politicians are the ones who actually are in control of education, and then your federal ones, they have your your, your U.S. rep and your U.S. senator. They have an interest in the schools because they have to make sure federal law is upheld. In the schools, and in this case, you're looking at whether or not potentially federal hate crimes a law could be brought to bear in this case. She made a threat of death. She wished that all black children be lynched. But here's the other thing, too, Queen. Here's the other thing, too. And this is why you may have to delay your letter by one day, possibly. You have to make sure your daughter's story is straight and accurate. Because that she cannot, she cannot have you looking like a fool. I told her that. So what I would do, what I would do, is I would make your daughter, unless you want to do it, you, but make her write out what happened. Events, okay. Play by play, or you can type it out as she tells you. But she got to know her story because the worst thing that can happen is you send a letter in, carbon copy all these elected officials. And then they say something didn't actually happen or she didn't actually say that. And your daughter say, well, that's what they told me she said. Uh-uh. You got to make sure your daughter is giving you what she knows. For example, did your daughter ever read the text? Yeah, she said she, I did ask her that. She said she did see it with her own eyes. Okay, she saw it. Okay, good. Have her write out step by step what happened and let her know the importance of being accurate because I've seen parents move off on what their child said only to find out that the child didn't have a fax oh, right. No, no. We can't I afford that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So yeah, your, your next step is the letter and we're going to see how they respond to it. Uh, address it to the superintendent, carbon copy to the principal. Also think you need to carbon copy to elected officials. I would probably do state, you could do all four. You could do state rep, U.S. rep, state senator, and U.S. senator. You might even want to do the mayor as well. That's five. Um, okay. You could do them all. Something like this, I would... The reason I need you to take this serious, because if the tables were turned, mm -hmm. if your daughter well, wished death on know. all white people, she would be brought up for expulsion right now. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. Because we are under zero tolerance in America's public schools. You cannot make threats of violence against other people. That is automatic. You got preschool black kids who were expelled for saying they wanted to hurt somebody. Yeah. Three and four year olds. This is a high school child wishing racial violence against an entire group of people. Uh uh. This got to be taken seriously. We're going to give them a chance to act after you do your letter. I'll take a look at it. And then if they don't respond. Thank you so much. Yes, if they don't respond, then the next letter goes to the United States Department of Education. Office of Civil Rights uh, demanding an investigation. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. And one more thing I want you to do is I want you to okay. call the police and ask them, mm -hmm. is this incident something that the child can be arrested for or at least brought up on charges for? Okay. Just, just a general question. Okay. Yes. Call them and ask them and see. Now, I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep you. My, my last question is, could this potentially make her a target? We live in a small town. We live in, like, it's this, we live in basically a, a white enclave. There's black, there's black people here. There's diversity, but this is really a small town. We is there, is there a man in the house? Oh, God, no. Okay. No. Who do you live around? Do you live around other black folks? Yeah, I do. I would let them, make them aware of what's going on. Make mm -hmm. them aware you're going to need them to be looking out for you, you know, looking out for the house, you know, make everybody mm -hmm. in the neighborhood uh, who is of our race family, make them aware of what's going on so they can be on the lookout for you. All righty. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, Queen, no you problem. Night. All right now. You be blessed. All right. All right, sweetie. Talk Bye-bye. Yes, indeed. We got to intensify the struggle. We got to intensify the struggle.